Oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you to begin. Welcome back. Oh, hi. I'm Mark, a professional artist, an art teacher, and in this enlightening episode of my weekly series I call YouTube Art School, I am going to show you how to paint lights like a pro. Lights make everything better. Even if your drawing sucks, with good lighting, it'll always look amazing. It's been scientifically proven by me. Just check this out. No light, garbage. With light, oh, oh wow, so beautiful. And all of this is way easier than you think. Uh-oh, quickly, let's get this class started. All right, class is in session. Pay attention, it's time to shed some light on how to paint light. I'm sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> Anyways, it's important to focus on lighting when we paint because it makes everything better. It's the um, the wow ingredient. It guides the eye. In games, it often tells a player where to go. In movies, it sets the mood and help us focus on what's important. In stand-up comedy, it focuses an entire audience onto one comedian in darkness. It guides us. That's deep. But yeah, it's powerful stuff. Today, after you pay the class fee of either one like or one sub, mm, that's better. We'll see how it's done in just a few steps. Five steps to be exact. So first, we need a drawing. Ah, oh, there it is. Step one, done. Next, uh, we'll paint in the flat colors. No, oh, step two, done. We're making good progress. Next, step three. Let's turn the lights off now that the flats are done and build the lighting from scratch properly. Click, wait, we can't see anything. That doesn't look too good, I'm scared. We're gonna need some light in here, quick. Let's brighten this up a bit by turning on the ambient lights, our first light source. Oh, thank God. The ambient lights can be any color, of course, but I like to use the sky as the source in most of my paintings. Therefore, in my case, it'll take on a light blue tint as if it was uh, like a nice sunny day out. The sky is everywhere too, it's a really big light source, so the ambient light can be applied everywhere pretty evenly on the subject to not overcomplicate things. Now that my flat colors are brighter, it looks a lot better, don't you agree? Mm, of course you agree. You just don't want to make the ambient color too bright since we're going to brighten this up some more with uh, more light sources in just a bit. Anything around like the middle of the value range here-ish should work pretty well in most cases. Not too bright, not too dark. Now we can move on. The next light source we'll add at step four will be the key light. That's going to be the main light source. The brightest of them all. We talked about the sky for the ambient light, so the key light, by that logic, would be the sunlight. While the ambient light of the sky is mm, ambient, it's everywhere because the sky is such a wide light source. The sun, in comparison, is just a single point, much smaller. It's a directional light, kind of like a spotlight. Unlike the ambient light, though, it'll only affect one side of our subject here, the side facing the key light source most directly. To make any more progress, we'll have to look at how that works on a simple volume, like a sphere first. Then we'll be able to extrapolate it on a more complex drawing like what I have here, one step at a time. So once again here, we start with a dark silhouette. Let's turn on the ambient light first. So for the first sphere here, uh, this is just a side shot. So we're looking at it completely from the side. And then the one down below right here is the same sphere, except as if we're a little bit higher and we're looking down on it. So we're gonna have ourselves a light coming straight down. And of course, some of it hitting our sphere here. Not all of it though, some of it just ends up on the side, ends up on the ground. Now the top half of that sphere is going to be lit because it's facing the light source. But as you can see, as the light kind of reaches the sides here of the sphere, we transition into the zone of shadow, kind of past the halfway line right there. And below that line, there isn't going to be any light, at least not from the key light. Now down here, we have the same thing except our line is going to be a little bit tilted there. Our sphere is in a different perspective after all. And as we did above here, we know that this line is the transition line between the lights and the shadows. And so once again, we're gonna have the most amount of lights closest to the light source. So here at the top of the sphere, and we'll have that light kind of fade off as it reaches that halfway line. And then let's say we had this slightly different sphere, maybe one that's a little bit more stretch boring. Well, the same logic still applies. So if you can shade a simple sphere like this, you're good to go for the rest of the process. 
Now, all of this is very quickly explained, but there's so much more to light. It would take hours. In fact, I do take hours explaining it and more in the color and light theory classes of my art program. Just one of the many classes of the program. If you like how I teach, check out the coupon in the video description down below for a huge discount. I'm extending the sale until the end of this month only. We're closing in on 9,000 students. I hope you join us. Now back on painting the lights. We're ready to take this up a notch and apply this light logic to my characters here. Time for step four, painting the key lights on the characters. But wait, not these characters. Instead, we'll paint the lights on simplified versions of the characters made out of, you guessed it, or maybe you didn't. But we'll paint light on characters made out of simple volumes first, way easier. Essentially, the same thing we just did when we only had one volume, one sphere. Except now we'll be doing it for all of these, all these deformed spheres. Even though I won't actually do this anymore while I paint, this is exactly what I'm thinking about. You have to practice abstracting the complex volumes that you see because it makes painting just way easier. It's just like constructing a character with a simple mannequin before adding on more anatomy details, like the stuff we've seen in previous classes. It's the equivalent process, but for painting a light instead. So we're still working on the key light here, so let's slap it on there. Whoa, there we go. So if we look at this, well, all of these individual shapes are just basically spheres, right? So deformed spheres. Now, one thing that's very important here, do this on a separate layer. Every directional light source should always be on a separate layer. And that layer should be set to overlay mode, or a hard light. Try both to see which one you prefer. You'll see why later. Just trust me on this one. Now, this isn't bad, but wait, something looks weird. You know, the light source is pointing straight down, so mm, shouldn't there be like some shadows here? It's time for a brain challenge. What's the challenge? Well, we're gonna try to redraw all of these volumes, aka their character, the simple character, but from the top view as if we were the sun looking at this character from the sky. So the character is going to be facing downwards. I'm just going to start quickly with the head first, because that's the thing that's well closest to the light source. Then the shoulders, then the breast, the chest, the little legs, all of it, of course, very foreshortened. But now what do we see? We see what the sun sees. And then guess what? What the sun doesn't see is in the shadows. <laughs> Aha! So all I'm going to do here is keep the painted light on the areas that I see from above and everywhere else. I'm just going to erase it. I can easily see the top of the head of my character. I can see the tip of the shoulders. Therefore, the neck is in the shadows. Now, of course, this isn't easy. It might actually be best if you start by using references and then slowly graduate to doing it this way from imagination. You can easily find a lot of helpful references online for lighting. I usually recommend this one here, Magic Poser Web to my students, but let me know in the comments below if you know any other resources that you can recommend. Anyways, now that we have the basic lighting painted on our simple characters made out of little blobs, let's see if it actually holds up on the real drawing. It should, right? Three, two, one, oh. Oh snap, that's not bad at all. Step four, done. Obviously, it lacks detail, right? We only considered simple volumes to paint this, so that makes sense. So now would be a good time to move on to step number five and repeat the same process of simplification, but with the medium sized details on the surface this time around. All right, let's see it. Here's the final key light with the additional adjustments for the medium sized details. Dun, dun. Mm. I like. Once we're done with the medium sized details, we should be looking pretty good now. Ship it. Wait, no. It's time for magic trick. Time to slap on some inner glow onto this layer. I'll usually do this for any directional light that I paint. Basically, all you gotta do is go into the layer styles of your lights layer and just add a little bit of inner glow. Here, you can copy those settings. It works quite well. Now, as you can see, this is going to slightly tint the terminator, the, the transition between the lights and the shadows. Hello, much better. That's another reason you want lights on their own layers. Now, this works in Photoshop, but what if you don't have Photoshop. You gotta do it manually, such as the life of a peasant. It's not that hard though. Here's how you do it. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and control click the content of my light layer. 
So however you do that in your software of choice, when we have the selection, what we want to do is shrink it. So here I'm going to go and modify and contract once again. However, you do this in your software of choice, try 20 pixels. And then once I have this smaller selection, I'm going to duplicate what I have here. So now I should have a big highlight what I started with and a smaller highlight here after I contract it a bit. I'm going to duplicate the original one, control click the smaller one or just load the selection. And then I'm going to go back to my duplicate and actually delete that smaller selection from it. Now what I'm left with here is the original selection minus the contracted selection, essentially just the edges of it. Now I'm sure you know where this is going. I'm just going to go ahead and tint this light here. Now this is on its own layer, so we can lower the opacity because this looks a little cray cray right now. Maybe a little bit of blur if it's a little too sharp. And there we go. Before, after, close enough. Now, anyways, our first key light is done. It looks pretty good, but having another light source, a secondary light would look even better. Let's call this an optional step six, the final step. But really, you can add as many secondary lights as you want. I'm just going to go ahead here and hide the first light that I have so we can start fresh and uh, do the same process again. Except this time, uh, the light is just coming from a slightly different direction. Very nice. Now, uh, well, we have two lights on their respective layers. Let's adjust their opacity a bit. We know the first one was the key light, AKA the most important light, the light leader. Like everything in art, there should always be a hierarchy of visual elements. In this case, the key light and the secondary light. It's secondary, so let's lower the intensity by lowering the layer opacity a bit. Now that looks quite delicious. Mm. Finally, real quick, we can have a little bit of fun by changing the color of those lights and maybe switching them around so that the secondary one becomes the key light. Very quickly, we're able to test out different lighting setups this way. It's super flexible. Just try sticking to a combination of a cool color paired with a warm color. It usually looks better. Ah, uh, the beauty of layers. Pretty cool, huh? This is way too much fun. I'm pretty happy with this, but um, this is going to be it for this week's class. I hope I was able to convey how important lighting is when painting. It helps give everything volume and then when done right, it can really make a painting. We just started with an ambient light, added a key light on a simplified version of our character, then refined that key light by considering all the smaller details and finally added a secondary light to make our drawing pop some more. With a little bit of inner glow effect on the key light, we end up with a very nice result, if I dare say so myself. What do you think? Was this helpful? Let me know. Now make sure you're subscribed to be on time for next week's class. At 1 million sub, I'm starting a Discord server, as you know. Very exciting. Also, since you made it until the end, you can get my custom brush set for free. It includes the brushes that I use most. Link in the video description. Hey, you do your thing, you know, in the back.